the video uh, on how to simulate or get set up actually. I'm not going to inflict uh, watching the simulation. I'll probably post some results later on. Uh, something along those lines. Uh, the key thing here is to just figure out how to get set up to do a simulation of this stuff. Um, because we are uh, interested in the Orlov rule uh, this week, uh, there's a guided video how to transfer or uh, remodel number one. This is a one here. Or I think I don't know how I've named these components. Um, this is the first uh, out of figure volume two fifty five. And we've got a. There's a row of things in a. We've gone from one to six. one to six is available. We're gonna remodel one into five in the guided this week. Uh, but for now, this video is only concerned on how to uh, set up uh, the simulation. And we'll be hopefully looking at uh, to justify this rule. Um, I'm only interested in why number one is really bad. So what we're going to do here is start by getting rid of all the other stuff. Uh, there's two ways to go at this uh, in the larger scheme of things. Uh, one is just to leave everything intact uh, and simplify in the simulation pack or in the simulation uh, workspace. But uh, for me, uh, this time we're going to go through a bit more uh, intrusive thing. Uh, and we're going to also start introducing the idea of history free uh, modeling. So what I'm going to do is normally uh, you would like to add or start capturing design history at the beginning uh, to save uh, some time and all the rest of it. I'm just going to actually pull down to the right. Now, what does that do? Uh, it highlights faces. So what I'm going to do instead is selection filter, not all, but bodies, and select through. Pull, pull down to the right. This will select everything I encompass but not everything I touched. I'm left with this uh, plate. So I have history not turned on yet, so it doesn't really matter how efficient I am here. So I'm just going to press delete. You'll notice what it does is it deletes the bodies, but not the components. So let's undo that. Which, when you have history not turned on, is the only way to move around. You'll notice here that we've got... I'm trying to get my keyboard shortcuts here. I can also select the components and delete them entirely. So whatever works uh, for the particular the situation you have. Um, here we're left with a body, uh, well sorry, we're left with this um, plate uh, with a lot of work has been done. If we hide we can see what's going on here. It's threaded already. And if you watch previous videos, threading is a big problem potentially for us. And so what I would like to do is show this uh, rule in its best light or the worst case scenario you can see here that the thread comes up and joins around about the top here it's also very slightly off diameter so i'm going to do some work here to uh, try and replicate what we want let's have a little quick look here actually first this diameter is 10 exactly so we're radius or 10 uh, diameter 20 so we're probably in an N20. So what I'm going to do here is rework or update this part and maybe add a little bit of um, sort of logic to it and rebuild these threads correctly to make sure that they mesh properly. So that's our plan for today. Uh, so let's close up. Uh, I'm also going to be trying to get this thread in its worst possible position in the middle there. So let's go ahead and do that uh, before the history is uh, turned on uh, for a little while here. So I'm going to try and simplify uh, some things. So hide the figure first. Notice none of these, oh, the plate is locked. Hold on, what's the other one locked? That would be helpful if I had select all of them. Sorry, I can't select everything, so I'll just... Nope. Everything seems to be locked in space. Uh, we have to watch out for this when we turn our history on. Eventually it will unlock. So first, let's get rid of the stuff we don't want. Um, I'm going to go ahead here and get the length of that 25. Just keep that in my head. 
I, I'm drawing a box around almost everything here. And just try Preston. So there's some problems here. One other way is to just delete this entire body. And then so I'm just gonna try deleting some stuff. So having some problems here, that's fine. So one extreme version is just delete the whole thing. We're left with an origin here, which should, if we're lucky, overlap the original origin. That's fine. So I'm going to rebuild that plate. It was 25 along its length. Let's get rid of the top origin. Let's see where that other one is. Looks like whoever modeled this put it right at the start. That's good. And that's fine. So let's go ahead here and start turning our history on. If I can right click the right thing, capture design history. This will make everything draggable. So I'm just going to go ahead here and lock these in place first. Ground. Uh, because we have the top not selected. Should probably have a look. And we see the usual stuff we're starting to get used to. Nice. So let's rebuild the plate here. So our origin is, is uh, chosen. If we want, can actually pick by just hovering. So this is the this is a good uh, start here. So I'll create a sketch. I'm gonna hide the rod end for now. And there's nothing to slice. So rectangle, center point. Nice. Snap it there. Drag it out. If I want here, I can actually just type in 50 tab 50. Another way is 25 times two. However you want to type these things in. Uh, let's have a look at our other part uh, before we do our extrude. So I'm going to go down here and get, you know, previously it was modeled all the way to the bottom of the part. That's probably fine. Um, what I did there was just clicked uh, bottom surface. It doesn't create a constraint, but it does show me the size. So I've got a reasonable uh, value here, minus 40. Uh, again, it's not a constraint. So if I move this uh, figure 2A, 255A1 around, uh, it won't go with it. But for now, that's fine. So we have our plate done. Uh, not draggable uh, with a little single sketch. Hide that sketch. All of this is within the component itself. So back to the top level. Looking good. Okay, so keep in mind that we haven't made a hole here yet. So let's go back in here and fix that up. I can, If I can get a piece of the sketch, I can right click on it. Edit sketch. Nothing happens yet until I go back in here and unselect that middle thing. So then we get a nice hole. Of course, we could use the hole tool, uh, but I'm going to thread this, you know, which will control the sizes and dimensions by standards. So that's OK. Nice. So a little bit of history up to the top level, uh, if we wish. And the next thing is to actually start modifying this guy. Now, as usual, can kind of drag it. That's fine. I want to get rid of these threads. Um, and probably this transfer, I suppose I'm just going to get in my way. So, eh. yeah, let's get rid of the transfer as well. Now, diameter of this is 10. That's probably what we're after. So let's go ahead here and delete. Oh, select what? We selected here everything. So, you'll notice what's happening here. I'm getting the Thing. What's going on? Might have to go in here manually and get rid of it. Just trying to get everything in one go here. That looks good. Where this bottom face? If we wish, we can try getting rid of that guy as well. 
we're left with this tiny uh, remnant that's good, of the red length. So that's all perfect. So we're now ready for threading. Now, let's have a go at threading from the top level. So search for thread or shortcut thread. You'll notice what happens. It allows us to pick this. Can we pick another? No, it won't let us span, as far as I can tell right now, uh, the component. So let's do it within the components. I'm also going to turn on uh, an inspection section analysis so I can see what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead here and thread the shaft of the rod end first. Because I want to make sure that I've got it uh, correctly threaded. So search for thread, shortcut thread. Pick that surface. Uh, this is not, if we model it, it, you'll see it threads the whole thing. This may or may not be what we want, probably not. Uh, for us, we, in this example, we definitely don't want full length. Turn that off. What you find is that it gives you a chance to uh, pull the thread around. Surprisingly, it also lets you move the thread up and down the shaft, so you don't have to have it start at the end. Uh, if you do drag off this bottom part, just put zero back in. And we remember from before how far we want the threads of 40. It's picking an M20 by 2.5, that's fine. Like, uh, Let's go for the larger coarse thread here. It'll make our simulation easier. And everything else is fine. Like just go with 6G. The standard is fine. And say OK. Nice. So what it does is it makes a standard thread. You'll notice it's not perfectly 10. So if we want, we can uh, do a little measurement here. Have to get in and get that surface, not the not the uh, uh, curve. And you'll notice it's made the entire surface, including the protruding part. Nine, just under ten, nine point eight nine, about nine point nine millimeters in radius. So it's not. If we're going to simulate this, we also have to know thread the inside of this guy. So let's go to the plate component. Uh, we might be having still thread in the repeat 12 o'clock. So I right click 12 o'clock, repeat thread, pick that surface, model it so we can see what's going on. Uh, you can see it's offset, that's fine. It's remembering 22.5. We want the full length, we want it modeled. Say OK. It's not aligned. So we have a choice here. Um, we can create a joint, as we call it, an assembly. Right now everything's just locked in place. But because of what we did, because we modeled or unmodeled, didn't thread this whole rod end from the start, the threads start off unaligned just fine. Um, what we need to do is fix that up for the simulation a little bit later. Let's have a look at what we've got here. Uh, I'm just going to activate my uh, run in and have a look where the threads are beginning. I am actually very interested in trying to stress this part right here. Uh, we know bending has uh, no loads in its center point. So one thing I'm going to be trying to do here is figure out where it is. See, it's kind of aligned. No, it's not quite aligned. Now, this depends exactly. It starts, you'll notice, it starts at a very particular point down here. This is where the thread begins. Uh, but we have it misaligned. I want this thing to be in its worst position. So we have a bit of fiddling here. Now, the easy way to do this is for me anyway, in my opinion, is to just rotate this stuff around. So I'm going to go ahead here and move phases. 
No, this does include our thing, our spot here. I'm going to try and rotate it around. Now we don't need to be perfect here because of the, the meshing that's coming. But right now we're going to, if we move this right now, it's not going to rotate correctly. So we'll set the pivot somewhere uniform. Some circular edge. I'm going to try and keep an eye. Can kind of barely see this guy right here. Try and rotate it around. We might get some errors here. So that it's in the right, the spot that I'm most interested in. I'm going to rotate it around to the back. So just try and align things. It's right there. It's not, that's not too bad. Trying to go for a nice number minus 25. I might be able to reuse that number. Say okay. I didn't do anything to the threads uh, as far as we're concerned, but now we do have this very tight spot here. When I do my simulation, I'm going to yank this guy on the inside of this in this direction minus x. This will stretch that, give us a big, nice big KT. And I'll also compress this face against the plate. Let's have a look at the plate. Now it's quite hard to get this sorted without uh, by getting uh, things aligned. So what I'm going to do here is actually rotate everything, all this whole thread inside the plate in one go. So move again. I want to pick bodies. Oh, I'm sorry, faces. Drag around. Make sure I've got the right phases. So it's kind of hard to tell what's going on here. So let's cancel that and hide this guy first. Then pre-select, move. Looks good. It's actually on the origin right now. So that's fine. Then we can show the rod end. And just kind of fiddle around until you get a good view of trying to get these threads aligned. Now, is it against the bottom? This is very fiddly, but is it against the bottom of this right or the top? So it should be against the top. So minus 124. Not bad. Like it, it's a whole number at least. So let's go with that. Turn on our visibilities. We'll admire. We've got not a bad situation here. It's very close, close, close edge. So that's our sit what our setup is done. Oh, don't need to do that. We just need to see the whole part and go to the top. This is a good time to save. So usually I just save this and call it sim ready or sim set. Um, what will happen is, depending on how you've got your history, every time you do a simulation, it will create a new milestone or snapshot. So right, what we've got here now is. Uh, the beginning where we see it comes in as a step and then my set sim set nice and I'm just going to go ahead here and get the simulation set up uh, static stress uh, notice what else is available we if we have time we'll get into this stuff later but uh, for now just static stress now, if you wish it'll give you a little preview of what's going on in these things. Uh, let's have a look at the, we don't need to simplify here. Uh, we will have some uh, meshing uh, issues in here, so we're going to have a quick look at the mesh. Uh, first step though is to make sure our materials are okay. Right now they're both stainless. Um, it's given as a warning. So let's go ahead here and pick something that you can do two at a time by shift selecting. And I'm just going to make them out of steel. 
and some basic like uh, 1050. Oh, there we go. Okay, that should get rid of the exclamation. Exclamation, this is probably a non-linear material, so here we are, linear. Safety factor yield strength is fine. Now if you want to change this, you can change it to ultimate tensile. Will it actually fail? Uh, for us, we're interested in the, it does the fastener or the threaded part actually yield and uh, start work hardening and all that sort of stuff, so that's fine. So we don't need to simplify, we've been through our materials constraints. Again, um, it's kind of up to you how you want to do this. Um, I like to leave the top a little free. So I usually end up fixing See if we can get away with maybe just one edge. But, no, to see that, we just need to make sure those constraints are visible. So that's okay, but we still need another constraint to hold this plate. Well, this is going to let it rotate around here. So I'm going to go for not fixed, but frictionless. Right now it can rotate and will should be fine. Like if we have, we might be able to get away with this. Um, what I'm trying to do is not constrain this material too much because uh, it's quite well. It's relatively close to the thread, um, but I do want it to be able to flex with the threads. If I start const over constraining things, it might start uh, crimping the part unnaturally. Uh, for this, because we have a pivot point here essentially, and the uh, like the universe is pressing up here against it, we do need to uh, deal with settings and make sure that our rigid body move modes is removed while we're at it. Let's just leave the mesh at it for now. We have advanced settings that we can deal with. Uh, Nikolai, for example, will be able to really help with this. Uh, we'll get probably into this much later. Uh, in the semester, or later in the semester, towards the end. Uh, element order default is fine. We have a curved part, so we definitely want curved elements. Maximum turn, uh, this means triangle sort of ratios and all this stuff. Uh, you can make the ratio, the maximum adjacent mesh, mesh ratio quite large. This will allow it to climb up quite fast. And I don't mind if it's a little small. Uh, small triangles inside big ones. This allows us to get into, for example, um, the threads quite nicely. Uh, adaptive mesh refinement, if we want it to do it on its own as it goes along. For example, if it realizes there's too much uh, difference between one mesh polygon and the next, uh, it can start to do it for us. You can just say, okay, none for now. If we do a pre-check, it'll show miss, missing structural loads and it might not, degrees of freedom will be not completely happy. Nonetheless, we're gonna put a load on this. Keep in mind that the thread that we're interested in, let's see if I can hide these guys. I'm just gonna hide the plate for a second, is right here. So, doesn't really matter, but I'm get, actually going to put a load in here. This is a rod head. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees out. It's a bearing load. Oh, it just lost its direction. Uh, it's very subtle. You can see that direction in there. So move it out minus 90 again. I'm going to have it pulling, uh, pushing this way, essentially, or pulling, and then we'll just give it like whatever you want, not a thousand newtons. Say so, okay. So we have a load and a, the plate is locked. What we need to do is transfer the load, the stresses through the mesh uh, with contacts. Let's just turn on plate and turn on automatic contents. 
contacts. It'll look for a tolerance. So we'll try this and see if it goes, gets it. It gives two rows. This can be quite complicated, especially with helical contact. Now, it doesn't really show us what it found in fusion these days. But what we have to do is edit the thing. And what we can see if we highlight it, it will show us what I'm trying to show us all once here. It's pretty small. So it looks like it's found one and two. Now, this doesn't seem like a big deal, but what it's actually doing is finding a contact between the underside of the thread and this top face. This is probably not such a bad thing. So we'll stick with that. Uh, it will be more or less bonded. Like this is going to be too tight because of preload to actually shift. So it's essentially bonded. Maybe there's other ways to change it to rough, offset, all that sort of stuff. Rough is a potential for us. Um, symmetric meaning uh, it'll check both sides of the contact if you want to see more find way over here. Uh, you can go through and get quite a bit more information in here uh, but for now I'm just going to go for cancel and say well that looks okay-ish let's give it a go so you'll notice now our pre-check goes green we've got some contacts We've got material, we've got some constraints on the plate, we've got a load on the rod end, and all we need to do is now have a look at the mesh. Turn on the mesh. It'll say, do you want to do that? And again, remember, we have helical um, contacts here. This will be complex. Uh, so I'm not, I'll wait for a bit here and see how this goes. But essentially what it's doing is following our setup rules for mesh and it's going to go through here and calculate uh, mesh for our simulation patients. Uh, while we wait for this, uh, this is a good time to start thinking about uh, efficiencies and uh, how well this is going to go. When you get a mesh like this, uh, we haven't even uh, started making it very small yet. This is a very slow mesh. Um, the, rule, the rule of thumb I've always been told since I was small. Uh, the longer the mesh, the longer the solve. Um, so if we're running into problems with the mesh here, we're already starting to see what the problems are going to be. Um, it's actually kind of interesting. So what we'll see, uh, this edition of Fusion right now runs on Nastran uh, the simulation. And Nastran is a very, very fancy solver. Uh, we can see what it's done. It's Again, let's have a look at the management settings here. We're at 10%. This is usually an ultra coarse mesh. Like it's as big as it goes. And you can see where that's happening on the outside, for example, of this block. However, interestingly, what it's doing, because we set our mesh in advanced so that it allowed, not gonna, I just pulled something there with my mouse, but or we set it so the ratios were quite allowed, maximum mass point ratio, adjacent mesh ratio, 
uh, we allow in fairly large uh, shifting from one mesh uh, polygon to the next. So we can see what's happening here. It goes quite large to small in a very rapid, rapid pace. I'm going to hide the plate. Have a look at these threads. Now, it's actually done quite a good job here. We can probably start just trying to. look at this. So for example, again, Nikolai uh, knows this stuff uh, inside out. Some stuff here. But normally what you want to do is look for where the mesh starts. Have a look and see if it's doing not a bad job. Like you don't want to see a giant gap here. But it's, again, to me, it looks not too bad. It's doing a reasonable job. Like you're, you're looking for darts, little tiny faces. Uh, you can see that it's uh, the mesh is not too bad actually. It's quite uniform, uh, uniform shape. You want a fairly uniform mesh. And then where we're going to be having some problems, it actually is already tightening up quite a bit. So. So it's not a bad start, actually. And I'm going to run it as is. Let's have a look at the plate here. See the same effect uh, where it starts. We see a, a, an accumulation of the mesh trying to essentially kind of represent the model, the P-Rep, uh, as a mesh quite nicely. You can see it spiraling out and getting bigger on the other side. Another part of the thread comes out of the hole, you see another tightening up of the mesh. It's not actually that bad. Same on the other side. Nice. So I'm going to give it a go as is. So again, you can see it's given us some extra mesh inside the, the socket. Uh, for as we might be slightly interested in, like, is there a stress rise around his neck? Um, you know, is there a big enough fillet here? Uh, but we're not expecting to have some serious problems in here. So there we go. Uh, next is to press solve. So we want to go to solve. Uh, this is quite a complex uh, part. So we can either run it on the cloud. Again, because I'm um, education here, you can see my education license. My five cloud credits is going to not really have much dent in my unlimited. Uh, if we want to do it locally, uh, you can also do that. Locally might be fine. Uh, if you're having problems with your education license not running, do it locally for sure. Then you won't use any cloud credits or won't try and charge you. Uh, if you're using education, why not give it a go? Um, key thing here uh, is if you run it on the cloud, it may fail um, because we're education is put onto the lower rung of uh, uh, resource use. Uh, if it start, if you start to put up a monster file or a real uh, or beast of a, a simulation, it may or may not actually run it. Uh, it might also fail or abort the run uh, because you're using up too much RAM. Uh, so. One way around that is either to try it again when it's less busy, who knows when the busyness is, uh, or run it locally. Uh, big files, uh, big simulations, like for example, event simulation, must be on the cloud. Uh, they will not run uh, locally. It'll take a month. So we have a choice here because it's just a static simulation. So I'm just going to try it on the cloud from here, and it'll allow you, you can close this, if we keep an eye on it, we'll close it. Um, it'll just go ahead and schedule it, start uploading uh, data to the cloud. Uh, this can take quite some time, so I'm not going to make you watch this. You'll eventually get some results. Uh, you'll be able to see this all in progress. Uh, I'm going to stop this video here. I might pick up on the other side with a separate video where we analyze the results. Uh, thanks for watching for now. Uh, over to you.